Well, Ariana's Ariana Maddox's brother is officially speaking out about their rift. We also have Jax Taylor that's blasting Vanderpump Rules, and Anne Marie is getting unfiltered about some of her Real Houses or former Real Houses Beverly Hills co-stars. Let's get into it, shall we? You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Surf Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. Welcome on in, welcome on in. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, what up? Um... Ugh, I'm back to wearing my Invisalign, so I apologize if my my speech is a little lispy or like a little off. Uh, I stopped wearing it during taping because I felt like I was able to like speak and articulate better without the plastic in my mouth. And then I went to the dentist yesterday. Shout out to Dr. Gabe Rosenthal. Dr. Gabe Rosenthal. He does a lot of The Housewives. He does a lot of uh, reality stars out in Encino. Does a lot of the Vanderpump people. Um, but I went in yesterday to get my new trays and be like, yay, we're on our final like 10 trays, right? And because I was getting a little more loose goosey with my Invisalign, he was like, have you been wearing your Invisalign consistently? And I'm like, yes, of course, they they fit perfectly. And then we try to put in my new trays and they did not fit very perfectly. So I got in trouble and I have to wear these trays for the next three weeks. Um, and now I just have to wear them 24 seven for, or well, 22 7 at least as much as we can so i apologize if my speech is a little different but we're just trying to power through the invisalign okay um that said shall we dive into the tea welcome on in guys hello 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 uh i guess we can start with ariana maddox and her brother jeremy jeremy is talking he's got loose lips and let's hope they don't sink any ships but he's talking out about his rift with ariana maddox because remember the other day he was spotted at i think it was Jax's, and he was hugging tom sandoval and he was talking about um he was talking to the pump rolls podcast about um how he hasn't heard from ariana in months and so people just kind of assumed that it was maybe because he was taking tom's side and he was leaning more teams uh more towards team tom because we saw him hanging out with tom and he's like i miss tom now we get that he is not speaking out about in defense of tom he says that his issues with tom and his issues with ariana are two completely separate things him working to repair his relationship with tom i guess more has to do with the fact that like he was actually friends with tom sandoval he's always going to have ariana's back at the end of the day he's made that very clear i don't know if his actions are necessarily reflecting that you can let me know what you think in the in the comments but um yeah i don't i don't know if his actions necessarily reflect that he's team ariana but he has made it clear that he is very much all about his sister but the reason that Ariana and Jeremy are not talking right now, I guess is because Ariana doesn't like his new fiance. So we saw a few days ago, he just got engaged. He was celebrating with Sheena Shea. Sheena said, congrats, because he, he popped the question. His girlfriend said, yes, now she's his fiance. I guess Ariana and this girl don't get along for whatever reason, they have not hit it off. And I guess he's choosing his, his fiance over Ariana, because he's like, you know, what am I going to choose my sister or the person that's going to be the love of my life for the rest of my life? And I was like, oh, that's a bold statement. Um, I feel like, you know, wives come and go, but your sisters are forever now. You're supposed to have her back like a real sister, uh, have his back like a real sister. So that seems to be the the stem of it. And so I guess he's like, unless my fiance and my sister can find a way to to coexist and make things work. It is what it is. And so he doesn't seem to be any in any rush to repair his relationship with Ariana, which is a bit of a bummer. But it's interesting that he's now like repairing his relationship with Tom. And I'm pretty sure that makes Ariana not want to repair her relationship with her brother even more. Because, oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Um. Sheena hosted his engagement party. I don't know if Sheena, ho it kind of looks like maybe, I don't know if Sheena hosted it or she was just there. I don't know. Um, and for Sheena to be involved, seriously, Sheena, seriously. Well, I mean, Jeremy's also Sheena's friend. I feel like Sheena can't do anything right without anybody getting mad at Sheena. Everyone just like looks for Sheena to be doing something wrong. Seems Ariana doesn't have time for anyone. I mean, I agree, Marianne. She's living her life right now. She's living her best life right now. So 
Oh, Nessa said, my husband is forever. My my brother's my brother comes and goes. Who girlfriend? Yikes. Nessa said, period. Nessa said, or what? Or what? So mm, don't know how we feel about that. Are we saying that marriage is thicker than blood? Um, I mean, I guess, sure. Depends on the family, I guess. But, all right. Oh, look at this. Kenny G, Kenny Greenway from Tasmania, Australia. Welcome on in, Carrie. Oh, did I say Kenny? Sorry, my vision's a little off today. Um, I feel like I got something in my eye. <sighs> Yeah, no, blood is thicker. I personally lean on the blood is thicker. Um, I have a very close-knit family, but I know everyone's family is different. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ariana's living her best life. She's got a new boyfriend. Jeremy seems to be living his best life. He's got his new fiance. So good for the two of them. Happy for the two of them. We'll see what happens next. But whew. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, Jax Taylor. So I guess Jax was hosting a valley party, a valley watch party at Jax's in Studio City. And there he was talking to, I guess, some of the patrons. And he was talking about how, um, talking about how Vanderpump Rules is scripted. He was kind of going on a rant, a typical Jax rant, right? He like does this often. We kind of see it in this week's episode of The Valley where Brittany's like, oh my God, Jax just says things and he doesn't think about the things and he doesn't think about the repercussions of the things. And Kristen does the same thing. They just say things and they don't realize they're not trying to hurt nobody. They're just trying to, you know, they're just doing them. And I'm just like, God, that is so me. I am such a Kristen, you know, I just do things and I just say things and things just come out of my mouth and I'm like, damn it, I didn't mean to do or say that, but it did and it happened and oh well. You know, um, the Valley last night making it political. Um, I have only seen like the first 15 minutes of the Valley, so no spoilers. I'll recap the Valley in tonight's uh, YouTube live stream because we're going to be recapping Vanderpump again. Vanderpump and the Valley will recap tonight on YouTube so you can get my full thoughts on that. Um, I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of thoughts about Ariana and this dog and Shim, her accusing Tom Sandoval of killing the dog. I The thing with the dog was a bit much for me when she's like, he tried to kill my dog. I had so many like mixed feelings about that because part of me is like, as a dog owner myself, and I have two puppies, right? They get into, into things that they're not supposed to, they're big dogs, but they get into things that they're not supposed to be getting into. I'm the one that's responsible for them. I'm the one that's in charge of them. I, you know, if I leave the house for whatever reason, I need to make sure that they're taken care of, you know, because I've left them alone before and sometimes they do fine and sometimes they eat up my whole damn couch, you know? So I have to constantly be aware of what my dogs are doing, what my dogs could potentially get into. I have to make sure, oh, let's lock the bedroom door because they know how to open it and they can get into the bedroom and get into things that they're not supposed to be getting into. So that said, if Ariana really wants Tom wants nothing to do with Tom, then you know what? Tom should have no, and, and this really is her dog and not Tom's dog. Then I know this is an unpopular take, but then Tom's not responsible for your fucking dog. I'm sorry. If I had a roommate, my roommate would not be responsible, which I've never had a roommate, but like if I had a roommate, my roommate would never be responsible for my dogs. Cause why they're my dogs, they're my responsibility. So if they do get into something and I do have to take them into the vet, that's my responsibility. That's my bill. If I left them in the care of somebody that was not capable of taking care of them, that's just the casualty of it. You know, your dogs are going to get into something they're not supposed to get into. And everybody's more concerned with like, why does she leave the food on the counter? And why does she not throw her food away? I'm less concerned. Listen, people are dirty and people are messy and people leave food. I, I think that's gross. I don't take food into my bedroom. Um, but like, listen, if I, if I had something last night and I, didn't throw it away. I mean, I would put it in the refrigerator. Like, I wouldn't just leave food there. I don't know. I think that's kind of gross. But listen, sometimes you get drunk, you order burgers, you eat burgers, and then it kind of, remember when I told you I accidentally ordered two burgers, and then they were sitting on my kitchen table when I woke up the next morning? Um, so it, listen, shit happens, right? We don't know why she left it there, and we saw her room was a bit of a mess. Anyway, but my point is more about the responsibility of the dog. Um six thousand dollar fix yikes but glad the puppy's okay i'm glad the puppy's okay too val but here's the thing if she's like this is my dog i paid for the adoption fees these are not tom's dogs 
then I'm sorry, Tom should not be around to be caring for your dogs at all. Tom should have no, you know, and everything was like, well, they went into my room without me, blah, 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 blah. And they shouldn't be going into my room. Okay, first of all, you share the house. He owns that room technically too, just the same way as you own his room. You guys own the house together. Um, so I just, I, I don't know. She closed the door. She closed and locked her door. I don't know why. Did we ever get why um, they put the dog in the room? Was it to be like, we're not responsible for this dog? Or I I don't know who, if it was Anne or Tom, do we know why they went into the room? Did we ever get clarity on that? Keep in mind, she's in a house where she isn't comfortable sitting in a shared living space often. But that's her choice. Here's my thing. Her, it's her choice to stay in this house. Granted, it is three months after the affair broke, right? But even then, it's her choice. I think Lala made a great point. Lala's like, listen, I didn't want to be fucking around Randall when I found out he was cheating. So what did I do? That night, I was out. She's like, I packed my things and I left. Thank you. Next. You know, she picked up and she was gone. You know, Eric, when she filed for divorce, she left. It's like, you know, Ariana is choosing to stay in this house. You know, she could be staying at somebody else's house. She can be, you know, couch. Or, like, yes, she is entitled to this house, but these are the things that are going to happen. You're going to run into your ex in the living room. You're going to have to come across him at some point. He's going to have access to your pets. If you don't want him to have access to your pets or you don't want him to have access to your bedroom, not that he should be going in her bedroom, period. I, again, I don't remember why he went into the bedroom, but that's the reality. Um, air conditioner needed fixing, had to go into her room. Maybe Maya got accidentally left in there. I don't know. Lala didn't own that house, though. Lala didn't own that. That's true. Lala did not own the house with Randall. That is a good point. Um, she did not own the house with Randall. But my point being, you can still own a house and not have to live in it. She still, if she were to move out, she doesn't forfeit the house. She's not giving up the house. She's still on that deed. You know, she's not like, that's the point is everyone's like, well, she lives there. It's her house. She owns it. Yes, I get it. She's not going to not own it if she gets herself an apartment somewhere else. She's not going to not own it if she goes and stays with Sheena for a few weekends. She still is going to own the house. She still is in possession of the house and she can still fight for the house legally. Many couples uh, own property together and when they split up, one person moves out of the house, the other person stays in the house, they fight it out in divorce court. It happens all the time. My point being, Lala's point was that if Ariana is so uncomfortable around Tom and Ariana doesn't want anything to do with Tom, then why is she still coexisting in the same space as Tom? It's not healthy. It's fucking weird. It's weird. Sorry, but it's weird. You know, everyone's like, Lala didn't own the house. Lala didn't own the house. Lala didn't. I get it. I, I, I know that Lala didn't own the house. It's a great point that you're all making. Uh, my child just ate a bottle of pills, but I shut the door. Um, it is harder to move out with all the pets. I agree. But here's the thing. You have to accept the circumstances that you're under. That's what I'm trying to say. These are the circumstances. You're going to live with your ex. That's the situation. Why would Ariana be the one to leave the house? Because she had the funds. She should waste money on rent because Sandoval fucked up. No. Not because she has the funds to leave. He has the funds to leave. She should leave because she's the one that's complaining about the situation. That is the point that I'm trying to make. You guys are completely missing the point. The point is she is unhappy living in that house, yet she is choosing to stay in that house. Every argument I've heard as to why she's entitled to stay in this house has been ridiculous, to be honest with you. Nobody has made one very good argument other than she bitter and she want to. And listen, if that's the case, she bitter and she wants to, good for her. Stay bitter, stay want to. Do you, boo. Do you. I ain't mad at that. But if you're constantly complaining about it and you're constantly running into these issues, you're putting yourself into this situation by staying here, period. Period, end of story. You know, she was being stubborn. I agree, she's being stubborn. Stacy says she had the choice to leave. She was not helpless or penniless. I agree. Mary says she wasn't there much. She had an Airbnb in LA. Good for her. We're seeing her there now. That depends on the state law. In many states, it's considered abandonment if you move out. 
Well, they're also not married though. It's not considered abandonment if you move out, if your stuff is still there and your co like certain states, if a partner leaves a residence, it's seen as abandonment. Yes, certain states. Okay, I'm glad that certain states say that, but we're talking about California, the state of California. Susan says, Lala is just jealous of Ariana. Sandoval eclipsed her Randall scandal. I don't think, if anything, Lala's probably just happy that Scandoval, listen, Lala made money off of Scandoval. I don't think Lala's mad about Scandoval. She made more money off of Scandoval than she would have ever made off of Randall because Randall wasn't going to come to play. Randall was trying to shut it down. Uh, lots of times in the separation, when one, okay, I get it. When one party leaves the house, I, I get it, everybody. Do you guys have talking points? Do you guys have like notes that everybody's reading off of today? <laughs> <laughs> For her own mental health. That's the point that I was trying to make. If it's that uncomfortable for your own mental health. Um, and she was house hunting for eight months. They said she had deals fall through. She was trying to get out. Um, she loves being a victim. I think Ariana didn't want to leave. I don't, I, mean, I don't know. There are many things in Meredith's voice. You can leave. Yes, I agree. She can leave. Are there consequences of leaving? Yes, but she could leave if she really wanted to. But right now, it seems like we're working out of spite. Guys, she had an Airbnb. She was there for filming. So she was only in the house to film. Is that what we're saying? So how real is that? That she was putting herself in the situation for the cameras to make it look like she was living there, even though she was really living in an Airbnb? Have we confirmed that? Ariana had to pay house debt, house bills, et cetera. It's kind of hard to get another apartment, own rent when you pay bills to one house. Well, according to Tom, she wasn't paying for any of those bills. Zach is saying she keeps complaining and hating, so it's time for her to move on. Thank you, Pam. Somebody put on their thinking cap this morning. Thank you, Pam. Zach is saying that she kept, she keeps complaining and hating, so it's time for her to move on. There we go. That's all I was trying to say, you know? It's like, if you're not happy in a certain situation, then leave that situation. There will be consequences with that, but there will also be consequences of staying. Pick and choose which place you want to complain in or just learn how to stop complaining. California doesn't do common law partnerships. Um, California, I get, I, I know, guys. I know about California law. My point was that everyone was saying, well, in some states, and I was saying, well, we're talking about California, so let's not reference some states. Let's reference in California, this is the law. There are ways that you can work around that, okay? Legally, you can work around that, all right? You can have an attorney. You can say that the situation was unlivable. You can say that the situation was whatever you want to say. She could keep her stuff there and still technically be a resident, but staying somewhere else for her own safety. She, she didn't feel, you know, safe. Her mental health was at jeopardy. Who knows? Maybe she could have said Raquel knew where I lived and Raquel, like she could have said any, there are ways around it. I don't get why everybody's so hell bent on making this point that Ariana had no other choice, but to, well, actually, no, this is where I'm going to call it some of your bullshit. Cause some of you are saying Ariana had to stay there. Ariana didn't, you know, she had no other choice, but to stay there because of California law. And then at the same time, out of the other side of your, your mouth, you guys are saying, no, Ariana should stay there. It's her house too. So you know what? Pick one, pick one. Does she have to stay there or does she want to stay there? Does she have to stay there? Or does she want to stay there? And now all the little people are going to come in the live chat and they're just gonna be like, not only does she have to stay there, not only does she want to, stay, maybe it's both. Zach. She's entitled to live her life and she's entitled to live her best life and do her things and have an Airbnb and also live in the house and also be mad at Tom because Tom cheated on her and fuck Tom. <sighs> I'm so over Ariana and Tom. Why are you arguing with me, Storm? <laughs> Why can't it be both? There we go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Both are true. There we go. There we go. She can live. Okay, I can't. I, I'm over it. Thank you, next. Zach, why can't Tom moving out be an option? Because Tom does, it is an option. But here's, Tom doesn't want to move out. Tom wants to stay there. And Tom's not complaining about Ariana so much. He's allowing Ariana to live there. You know? Wow, Zach, you are on the loose. Am I on the loose? <laughs> 
The goose is on the loose. Merce has fallen out the purse. Listen, the reason I'm not saying Tom should move out is because Tom doesn't fucking want to move out. Tom wants to keep the house. Ariana doesn't want to keep the house. Ariana just doesn't want Tom to live in the house. Ariana has the issue. She should move out. Thank you, Velda. Vita, Velda, thank you. Ariana is the one with the issue. She should leave. I agree. Zach is all knowing. And if you don't agree with him, you're an idiot or lesser than. Thank you. Somebody gets it. <laughs> uh, why are you so upset? It's her life. She can do whatever she wants. I agree. She can do whatever she wants. She's doing what she wants, but she's also unhappy about it. And I'm tired of hearing her complain about it. Zach has been drinking Lala sparkling Kool-Aid. Have I? Oh, God. Don't get me started on that water part. The fucking water part. Okay, so let's get into the Jacks of it all, because we went on a bit of a tangent with the Ariana and the house and the dog and stuff. And we're never going to agree on Ariana, right? Ariana at this point is like Donald Trump. Where everyone's going to have such polarizing opinions, and some people love her and some people hate her, right? It's just what it is, you know? God, not saying that Ariana's done. Okay, that's going to get taken out of context. Okay, moving on. Anyway, in what, what was it? Now I forgot the point that I was trying to make. Zach, if you were Ariana, would you be petty and stay in the house or leave? I would get my ass out of that fucking house. Or I would make him move out of the Well, I just wouldn't want to live with him. I wouldn't want to stay in that situation. I'd be like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm getting my dogs. I'm moving out. I'm leaving. My attorney's going to deal with this. And we're going to have this resolved. Why is her attorney taking months to respond? That's the other thing. She's delaying this. I get it. She wants to itemize everything and get all the... I get it. Listen, I get her position legally. I do understand. I do like understand it. But my point is like, she's really unhappy in this situation. Now she's saying that he's a dog murderer. That's another reason that she can legally defend in court and be like, he tried to murder my dog. Yeah, I don't think he tried to, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, but so, oh, the water. That's what I was getting on. Cause Jack's tweeted and he's like, when you've run out of things to talk about and you're hosting a water tasting, now you know the show's really gone downhill. And he tweeted that out. And then he was um, which I agree. A water taste, like really, a water tasting. You have a water sommelier. What? No. I do agree. What different waters taste differently and different sparkling waters taste differently. But you also don't have the luxury of going into a restaurant and be like, what are, where's the menu of sparkling waters? Like, that's just, you, you don't have that option, you know? And most of the sparkling waters that I'm sure you're trying, they don't have at the standard markets. So like, what's the point? It's fun to drink milky, cummy water. No, thank you. I'll pass on that one. Listen, I do like me some Lala, but don't give me that, Lala. Don't give me that sparkling water party. I guess everyone did bring their own mixers, which is good for them. I guess it was a reason to get together. But I agree with Jax. But Jax was also at Jax's hosting a watch party of the Valley. And in the watch party for the Valley, he was talking about how Vanderpump Rules is scripted. He's like, the first six seasons, he's like, I was on this show forever. The first six seasons are... Um, were the best, right? He's like, that. they were authentic, they were real, but he's like, nobody's wearing Chanel earrings to the beach. And I get it. I get what he's saying, right? He's basically, maybe the word scripted isn't the best term to use in saying that Vanderpump Rules. I think he meant to say it's become fake, it's become produced, it's become performative, right? Because there's not like a script of like, and here's the thing, I do know somebody, well, yeah, I actually was colleagues with someone that ended up becoming a, well, actually, I know a few Vanderpump Rules producers, but there was one specifically that was a field producer. And this person, I remember um, when they first got onto the show, I remember they were telling me, I think it was, well, actually, I won't say what season because I'm not trying to out this person, but I remember them, I was having lunch with them one time and I was telling them that, or they were telling me that they had just filmed a scene with, they had a thing for Vanderpump Rules. And so basically what the producers will do is when you're filming scenes or, or any scene for the show, really, the producers will often prompt you, right? Where they're like, okay, this happened yesterday. So today we're going to this restaurant and you're meeting with this person and you need to discuss what happened yesterday. You know, what did you guys think of the fact that uh, Kristen Doty threw a shoe at Jax's head? And then you go and you sit down and you're like, okay, 
So what did you think? You saw Kristen, she threw a shoe at Jax's head. Is that scripted? It's structured, right? It's produced. Um, and Jax's point is that as they were starting to make more money, as they were no longer bean servers, like they would have to work at the restaurants because the restaurant had to be incorporated into the show. So like then we see Sheena and she's still waiting tables when she's buying a house in Marina Del Rey. And it's like, mm, is she really still a server at Sir? No, but we all kind of saw through that. So when Jack says that it's scripted, that's what he means is that it was heavily produced. It was... um fake but i also think fake in the sense of like and the point he's trying to make is fake in the sense that um it's the cast members that are also you know trying to perform in some way like they know that they want to have a certain storyline they want to come across a certain way they'll dress a certain way or act a certain way they now do things whereas before no they were just being their chaotic messy selves and the other thing too is the show lost stassi it lost Kristen, and it lost Jax. those are three of the messiest ones and the only two messy ones we really have left are like james and lala but james and lala are now like sober um, James isn't as chaotic as he used to be. He's like now in a healthy relationship and he's buying a house and he's a dog dad. And, you know, he's kind of like tamed it down a lot more. Lala is still chaotic as ever. She'll still pop off even sober. She's still feisty. I identify with that a lot. Um, but even though I'm not, I'm not sober. I mean, I'm in, in this moment. Yes. But like, not like in general, I'm not like I'm sober. I'm not drinking anymore. Cause like, who wants to do that? But like, you know, Nobody, there isn't as much, I mean, I guess we do have, Sandoval is a pretty great villain though. He's doing pretty well. And Sheena's always good at pushing the storylines, but we just don't have the chaotic mess. And we also don't have the low stakes that we had in the earlier seasons of Vanderpump Rules. So I understand why everyone's a little more filtered, why everyone's a little more, um, you know, mindful of the cameras and stuff. So, <sighs> yeah, that's what it is. It is what it is. And if you're on camera, it's pictured. You no, know, I agree with that too. But like at the beginning, they didn't really care, nor did they, nor were they able to afford, you know, these Chanel earrings that they're now wearing to the beach. You know, I get Jax's point, but that's the point he was also trying to make is, well, that's what makes the Valley so much more real is because we're all real. We're all real couples. We're real families. We're trying to provide for our families. He's like a show only has about a good six seasons. Cause then once you get to season six, the cast member just really peaks and you know, they're making good money and they're famous and all of these things was at the beginning. Everyone just has the, um, the desire to live their authentic selves on camera. Thoughts of Vanderpump Villa. I haven't watched Vanderpump Villa yet. I've heard mixed reviews about it, though. Some people I know have really loved it, like Kenny G in the live chat. And other people have felt that it was very fake, very produced. Like, they're very much performative as well. It's like Housewives thir third season. Yeah. Except now we're, what, 11 seasons deep? And I think people also know, like, Scandal was so big that, like, they're living it out and dragging it out and all the things. So, Yeah. They have their glow up. That's right. They do have their glow up. And once the glow up comes in, it's all over from there. Um, what else? Oh, let's oh, let's get into the Anne Marie of it all. Because the Beverly Hill stuff is good. Um Anne Marie was just on Carlos King's podcast. And so I want to touch on some of the the points that she made in the podcast because it was really good. Oh, and then I want to talk about Kristen Cavallari. Um, but before that. Just wanted to remind you guys, as we're talking about Maya, and I, you know, I know what it's like having two dogs here. We all know your pet is one of a kind, and so is their journey. So well, with every playful moment, it's a memory in the making. And sometimes, you know, our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting in trouble. That's why you should definitely go and check out ASPCA pet health insurance. The ASPCA pet health insurance program offers customizable and accident plans, making it easier for pet parents like you and me to help your pet get the care that they need. You want to take care of your pets, guys. We want to make sure that they are around and that they're healthy and that, you know, we keep them in good shape, right? In all areas. And the ASPCA pet health insurance program allows you to customize your plan, helping to ensure that your pet's plan is as unique 
as they are because vet bills can really add up ariana especially when you're least expecting it like when you're when tom sandoval locks your dog into your bedroom it's simple use their app to submit a claim and you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account somebody should have told ariana about this sooner to explore coverage, visit ASPCAPetInsurance.com slash no filter. That's ASPCA petinsurance.com slash no filter. Again, that's ASPCA petinsurance.com slash no filter. This is a paid advertisement insurance is underwritten by either Independence American Insurance Company or United States Fire Insurance Company and produced by PTZ Insurance Agency Limited. The ASPCA is not an insurer and is not engaged in the business of insurance. Okay, let's talk about Anne Marie because she calling some people out. Anne Marie, oh, sorry, Anna Marie. I, it's spelled Anne Marie, but it's pronounced Anna Marie. So Anna Marie was just on Carlos King's podcast, and I actually thought it was a great episode. Um, I listened to most of it yesterday, and then I listened to the last little bit of it when I took the dogs for a walk this morning. And um, I know everyone, a lot of people were loving my interview with Carlos King, which aired on the podcast yesterday. He was great. Had a blast with him. Um, I am glad that everyone really liked the interview. So um, that was the first time he and I have ever talked, ever communicated. I, I, I was familiar with him. He was familiar with me. And now we're, you know, I'm glad that we actually got to connect. And now he's like, you know, come on my podcast. I'm like, yes, bring me on. But he had Anna Marie, Anna Marie on, and Anna Marie did not hold back. She talked about how there were so many scenes that were filmed um, with her family, with her husband, with her kids, you know, her dealing with the grief of losing her mother, which I thought would have been, you know, very endearing to watch. She's like, I hate it, and I cringe that week after week it was constantly talking about the esophagus, the esophagus, the esophagus. And her and Carlos make a good point of, like, they brought Anne Marie in halfway through the season. The only time they're going to bring in a full-time housewife halfway through is when nothing is happening and they need someone to come in and make something happen. Not only was it nothing happening with uh, that they needed to bring in Anna Marie, but they also brought in Camille and they also brought in Denise. And apparently they also brought in Teddy. And there was a scene that Teddy filmed that didn't end up airing uh, where Teddy ended up getting into it with one of the other housewives. And then they asked Teddy if she would come back as a friend of, and Teddy said, yeah, only if you pay me. I'm not Brandy Glenn, but you better put some respect on my check. And they said, thank you, next. So they didn't end up paying her. And, you know, interesting. Um, but yeah, so Anna Marie talks about all of the scenes that were left out, all of her family scenes. Um, she says that there were even like some one-on-one -on -one scenes that she filmed. Like there was a one-on-one -on -one that I think she had with Garcelle and with Kyle. And so there were other scenes that she filmed with other housewives. It just never made the cut. Why it never made the cut? I don't know. Why we chose to focus on Crystal's brother when Crystal doesn't have a real storyline? I don't know. But she does get into the Crystal of it all. She said that Crystal is the most fake off camera as she is on camera and i will agree with that okay um i've only met crystal once and that was at kyle's white party and i will say she was very lovely to me um she was very sweet uh had nice things to say but Anne Marie is like, she's not the same person that she is. You know, she's very, she loves to be a real housewife. She loves holding a diamond. She wants to keep her diamond. She was manufacturing this drama for the sake of a storyline. And listen, Anne Marie has no reason to lie, right? I believe Anne Marie. And a lot of people are like, well, Anne Marie is a liar. You can see that she said that Sutton had an eating disorder and Sutton, and then she denied that she ever said that. Listen, things happen where you say things and you forget that you say things and then you know, the footage shows otherwise. We saw it with Lisa Rinna. Remember when she was like, Kim Richards is close to death, right? And she's like, I don't remember saying that. And then she saw the footage and she was like, I guess I said it. I didn't remember saying it, but I said it. That happens all the time, right? Crystal, I think, has a different tendency of living in her own truth and her own reality. And that often contradicts the objective truth or the objective reality. And Crystal is not good at, taking that back. So everything that I've heard about Crystal, I believe, I know people that know Crystal personally or knew Crystal personally. They feel like Crystal has changed since joining Housewives. They feel like on camera versus off camera, she's a very different person. I've heard this from many people, um, other housewives, people that know her that aren't even on the show. Um, yeah. 
So I feel like, you know, I believe everything that Anna Marie is saying about Crystal and how Crystal really just wanted a storyline and she convinced Anna Marie, like, we'll do this fight, but we'll make up at the end of it. Um, because we'll get into drama, but it's okay. We'll be fine at the end of the day. And I believe that I actually think they should not bring Crystal back for next season. If these are the things that are happening and these are true, and it's basically a known fact that Crystal is performing on the show, why are we keeping this person on television if they're not being their authentic self? Not only that, but it's like, why are we talking about Crystal's brother? The storyline is so fucking stupid. Um, and not talking about her life with Rob Minkoff. Like, Rob is a Disney film director she knows people she you know rubs elbows with very famous affluent people why don't we get a peek into that part of the lifestyle she also is terrible at hosting parties her taco tuesday night was garbage i could have hosted a better taco tuesday at my apartment the fuck you know not a fan of crystal um uh, Anna Marie also calls out the double standards. She's like, it's interesting that Garcelle can behave a certain way towards Dorit, but if Dorit has any little, you know, anything towards Garcelle, immediately Dorit's labeled racist. And Anna Marie came to Dorit's defense. She's like, she's a very nice woman. I don't believe that she's racist. Listen, I think Dorit can be a little tone deaf. I think Dorit can, um, you know, miss the mark a few times. I think she can over explain things that ends up making her put her foot in her mouth. But, you know, Anne Marie was very much talking about the double standards, not only with with Dorit and Garcelle, because she's like Garcelle was literally sitting there, rolling her eyes and chuckling and like la basically, you know, laughing at Dorit's robbery. She's like, but if Dorit did any of that to Garcelle, like that would never fly. It would immediately like, remember when Kyle called Garcelle out for not paying her tab at a charity? That fucking pissed me off because I come from the nonprofit world. That was my background before I pivoted into full-time content creation. Um, and I knew people like that where they'd be like, I'll donate, I'll donate, I'll donate. And then they do it performatively in front of everybody else. And then when it's time to collect the, the invoice, it's time to get the invoice paid. They don't want to pay up because they wanted to make themselves look good without actually wanting to donate the money to the charity. We once had this guy, Ooh, it pissed me the fuck off. He went and was the biggest donor in the room for one specific charity event, and he bid $20,000 on one live auction experience, right? Because you have a live auction, you put up your, your paddles, and like, I bid for this, I bid for that. So um, he bid $20,000. And then afterwards, he ended up going, and listen, we charge on the spot. We're like, oh, you $20,000? All right, here we go. Let's go. Let's run your credit card right now, homie. Let's get it charged his card on the spot, was like, oh, wow, look at me. You know, everyone was clapping. Oh, wow, big spender, 20 grand, which, listen, we've had more than 20 grand. But that one night, it was a smaller event, and 20 grand was the most that we got out of one person that night. Um, but so then afterwards, calls up Amex and had Amex reverse the donation. So that was reversed. Um, so people do shit like this all the time. So when I found out that Garcelle did not pay her tab, I was like, oh no, yes, Kyle, call her out. And then they went to lunch and Garcelle, you know, she's just like, it was a mix up and you know, it, whatever. And then Garcelle was like, would you have done this to any of the other white women on the cast? And Kyle was like, what, what do you mean? Like, don't make this about that. And she's, and then that's when Garcelle gets into the whole thing about how like, there's this connotation of like black people that don't pay their bills. And that's what Kyle was trying to do, whether she was aware of it or not. And so we've had so many of these issues where Garcelle gets called out and then immediately it gets drawn back to that. So Anne-Marie brings that up and she says that, you know, there are many times where these are Anne-Marie's words, not mine, but she says that there are several times in the past where Garcelle has played the race card and she's overplayed that hand because she knows the other women can't challenge her, you know? And, um, and Marie is like, this is the first time that I was able to come on the show and actually challenge her and call her out for her double standards. And she's like, and Garcelle didn't like that. She said that she also thinks that Garcelle was very much on her side until the audience started to turn on Anne Marie. And then that's when Garcelle turned on Anna Marie as well. So I don't think Anna Marie's opinion can really discount Dar Garcelle's experience. Well, that's rich coming from a white woman. Um, sorry, that was bitchy. I shouldn't have said that. But uh, I agree with you. I don't think Anne Marie's opinions or experience can discount Garcelle's opinions or experience. But we see that happen all the time with Garcelle and the other women, right? I'm just saying, 
Anne Marie, Anna Marie's experience does have an opinion, does have a little more validity to it because they do have a common thread, right? Garcelle and Anna Marie, they were the only black women on this cast. So there was that common thread that um, Anna Marie was able to connect to Garcelle on. And she also said like Garcelle, you know, very much was friendly and nice to me. But then once the audience turned on me, she also turned on me as well. And she said that, you know, Garcelle made it seem like, you know, one of the issues because, which I'm glad Carlos King asked her about. And listen, I also love that we're having this conversation and it's being held from Anna Marie, who's a black woman that's on the cast. And then we have Carlos King, who's a producer. He understands the mechanics and the behind the scenes of how these shows work and how, and he's always said that he felt like Garcelle and Sutton are performative. They pander to Twitter. They do whatever they think the audience will like rather than be their authentic true selves. And I think that happens a lot on this cast. Carlos and I had that conversation when he was on my podcast, you know? Um, Storm says, I liked Anna Marie after the Carlos King interview. I thought it was done really well. I didn't listen to when Anna Marie was on Juicy Scoop. I did see clips of it, but I think it was a lot more powerful with Anna Marie and Carlos King. Um, Cause I think there were topics that they were able to touch on that she wouldn't have been able to touch on with Heather McDonald. Right. And I adore Heather. Um, but like two of them or one of them being the Garcelle issue and the other one being um, because she also did talk about how Garcelle has double standards when it comes to calling out Dorit, but not calling out Sutton. And I agree because there are several times where Sutton has made some of the same infractions that Dorit has made, but yet nobody seems to hold Sutton accountable for those things, but everybody wants to beat up Dorit. And so, you know, Anne Marie says that at the reunion on the show, like she calls out Garcelle and she's like, why is it okay? Why did you never defend me when Sutton was saying that I was yelling at her and when Sutton was saying that I was attacking her? She's like, but yet when Dorit does it, you will hold Dorit to the fire for any little thing. But yet Sutton continues to consistently get a pass from both Garcelle and from Crystal, right? Because Crystal's often defending Sutton as well, um, which I think, and I think, did Carlos say this? Somebody said it, that Garcelle, Sutton, and Crystal, that they're in an alliance and they don't have a true friendship. I've said that from the beginning. I stand by that. Um, so... Uh, but she talks about the transphobic comments and she talks about um, the accusations that she's a Trump supporter and that she's a Republican. And she says that when it comes to, and that she's friends with Candace Owens, she says that when it comes to the Candace Owens of it all, she doesn't know Candace Owens has never met Cl Candace Owens, that there was, I forgot what issue specifically that there was an, Oh, the, I think it was, she was referring to a fashion campaign. I believe it was the Balenciaga campaign where they had a child uh, in the in the photo shoot and there was also a bear in it that had a ball gag and people were very outraged because they were like this is you know dancing on the line of pedophilia and it was you know very heavy um and so Anne Marie's like I didn't like that I was outraged as a mother I have children so she's like but then when it comes to um Candace Owens she's like Candace Owens is somebody that spoke out about that and I started following her on Twitter as a result of that. And that was a big issue because, you know, she said that the other women kept trying to make it seem like she was aligned with Candace Owens in some way. And she's like, I don't know Candace. I've never met Candace, right? She says in reference to Trump, she's not a Trump supporter. She's like, I don't even know where that came from. I guess because her values are a little more conservative um, and not as liberal. So people automatically assume she was a Trump supporter, but she's like, I'm not a Trump supporter. Um, I do not support Donald Trump. She made that very clear. And then the transphobic stuff. She basically said, and listen, this is a common argument that I've heard a lot. I don't think that it's, I know this is going to be a controversial thing to say, but I don't think that Anne Marie's, Anna Marie's uh, position is necessarily anti-trans or transphobic. Um, I, I can see both sides of the coin, right? Where, you know, you want inclusion, you want acceptance, you want, you know, trans women to be able to play sports with other women to be able to play sports on a women's team. I get that. However, I do also see, you know, people like Anna Marie and her husband who feel like, well, but there are biological differences between, you know, somebody that's cis, uh, that's, cis male or cis female that's born uh as a male or born as a female and you know your hormones are different your body just 
operates differently. And yes, there are certain hormone therapies that you can go on, but there are going to be biological differences. And that's just a reality, right? And that that is a true scientifically proven fact, right? Remember when everybody loved to throw the, the fun science word around in 2020? That's the reality of it. And I understand that. That's not to say I agree with it or don't agree with it, but I understand it. So I understand Anne Marie's position. And I don't think that that makes her transphobic. I think that that makes her, you know, her thing is about, her, she says that we should have safe spaces for everyone, right? Um, and that's safe spaces for women that play on uh, a women's sports league and as well as safe spaces that we need for the trans community as well. She said that she's very openly supportive of the LGBTQ plus community. She's supportive of trans rights. And I get that. You know, I think a lot of people automatically um, get labeled as transphobic because they have certain opinions about, you know, certain issues such as, you know, sports teams, right? Like Anne Marie and her husband. So she clarified that and she explained that, you know, it's more about creating a safe environment, a safe space and safe environment for women that are participating in um, women's sports. And so sometimes there are advantages that a trans woman would have that, you know, somebody that is born biologically female that they, you know, wouldn't necessarily have when it comes to their biology and the body that they're born into, which I understand. Um, listen, I don't know how I'm not a coach. I don't know how sports work. I don't know if it's divided by age or weight or height or what, or how we kind of categorize those things. That's Anne Marie's position. And my opinion is that I don't think that that is transphobic. I think that, you know, she, you can support the trans community, but also have, you know, an opinion about something like that. So she clarifies that for Carlos King. Um, what else does she talk about? Crystal being fake, Garcelle double standards. And then she just says that she wishes she would have, oh, she said that her mom, that she thinks that her mother, and this is kind of how we tie up the conversation that she had with Carlos. She says that her mother is the, she feels like her mother blocked her from coming back on the show because she knew, because a lot of these conversations she says did happen on camera, but for whatever reason, they ended up on the cutting room floor. Maybe because they didn't want to necessarily get back in. They didn't want to create another Roni situation um, where it was heavily political. And we talked about, you know, all of these political issues and then it became fatiguing for the audience. So she says that she's not entirely sure. Maybe it has something to do with her husband's past and Bravo just being like, we don't want any association with that. That's a possibility as well. I I don't know why Bravo cut her scenes, to be honest with you. Why would they bring her in and then not really be able to utilize her? But from the interview, you can see the real side to her. You know, even when she's explaining some of these more political issues or, you know, social issues that she believes in you know, she knows how to communicate in a way that I think is important for us to have people with different opinions on these shows. You know, I think one of the issues with Ramona and Ebony on the Roni season that went under um, is you had somebody like Ramona that doesn't know how to communicate effectively. You know, she can't communicate her values in a way that doesn't put her foot in her mouth and make her look dumb, you know? I think that if you're going to tackle political issues, we should be able to look at the conservative and the liberal sides. You know, I think there's too heavy of a focus on you can only have a more liberal opinion when it's important to also see these conservative values on these shows as well. And to see that people are able to have disagreements, people are able to look at both sides of an, of an issue and be OK and still be two human beings that you know, exist in this world and can still be around each other and can still work together. I think it's important to showcase both political viewpoints, whether you agree with them or not. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, it's not so much that, you know, Democrats or Republicans are good or bad people. They're just people that see the world differently. They're people that have very different values. They're people that, you know, um, just think differently. You know, their priorities are different. Their backgrounds could possibly be different. The way they view the world is different and that doesn't make them good or bad people. And so we need to be able to allow someone like Anna Marie that is a black woman, that has a black family and a back black husband, that is more conservative, that does have these values that are not necessarily super liberal. We need to be able to show that on television. I think that that's important to show that the world is not one way. And here's the other thing. 
when it comes to our own arguments and our own values, I think it's important to challenge ourselves, right? If I believe something, like let's say, you know, I believe that this wall is white and somebody else is like, well, no, that wall is cream. And if we have a conversation about it and I understand where this other person is coming from, I'm able to then see, oh, okay, you were raised with, you know, this background where you had all these different shades of, of, you know, eggshell and cream and all that stuff. Like your dad was a painter, or, you know, so you had exposure to all of this rainbow spectrum of variations of white. Whereas to me, I just see that wall and I'm like, that just looks white. It's as simple as that, you know, and then you're able to understand each other and you're able to see each other from a human level and realize like, oh, you're not a bad person for thinking that's a cream color. And I'm not a bad person for thinking that's a white wall. You know what I mean? Obviously it's a very basic example, but my point is when we listen to each other, it also helps us I think, strengthen our own values. I think people are afraid of that. When they believe in something, they're afraid to be challenged because they're afraid that maybe they don't really know their argument and they like to have it very dense, right? But if you challenge that and you defend your values, you really have to question yourself and be like, why do I believe this? Why do I think this situation is this way? And when you have to kind of do that inner work and and, and break down why you believe something, and why you believe that to be true and why those are your values, it strengthens your values, I believe. I believe that it strengthens your values. Um, oh God, do I even want to read the live chat after all of that? Okay, a lot of people are saying preach. Okay, good. So a lot of people agree. Okay, good. Too many people want an echo chamber and echo chambers don't help. All they do are you know pat each other on the back and then we don't really learn anything. We're just validating each other's very dense and sometimes ignorant beliefs, right? And I'm not saying that for one side or the other that beliefs are ignorant, but I'm saying when we just are like, you know, the wa the wall is white, that's, you know, that is potentially an ignorant statement because you're looking at it from just the surface, right? From just the shallow. But if you dig deeper within that, then you break down that ignorance and you really start to understand why you believe that that wall is white. And, you know, the lighting and the coloring of the room and all that different stuff, you know. Again, the white wall is a very basic example, but I was just trying to break it down in a way that was completely non-political. <sighs> so, yeah. Okay, good. Everyone kind of seems somewhat in um, agreement. Oh. One person said, I don't like her, but that was her edit. I wish we had a second a second season. So her side of the story could have shown more. Remember, half the population thinks the way she does. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Someone else says, Anne-Marie is so full of it. She blames the ones who had nothing to do with her demise. She can blame herself, her husband, and her incessant need to talk about an esophagus. Okay, I think that's a very dense opinion. You're entitled to that, but I think it's a lot more than just the esophagus. And she also said she didn't have an incessant need to talk about the esophagus, but that there were a multitude of other scenes that didn't make the cut. Why the editors chose to only focus on the esophagus, I don't know. Um, can she blame herself? Sure, she can blame herself. I don't think she's blaming Garcelle or blaming Crystal for um, her getting fired, but she definitely... Um, I'm not saying she's blaming them for her demise, but she's calling out the double standards and she's calling out the difference in behavior of them on camera versus off camera. And I believe she's entitled to do that. She was on this show with them. She knows these people. So she's only speaking from her perspective. But if you don't think that her perspective is valid and her experience in this world is not valid to you, I don't know, maybe you need to look a little inward. Maybe some of your subtle racism is coming through. See how we do that? See how we can very easily turn that around and make it something that it's not? Or is it? Mm, things to question ourselves with. She and Carlos are not for me. I like Anna Marie and I like Carlos King. Um, I will say that they are for me. Doesn't mean I agree with them on everything, but I do like them as people. Um, it's great when we can see both sides of an argument and each coming to understand each other to learn and grow. Yeah, I, I agree, Michelle. It sounds like at least my the audience that I have here, um, we seem to be not so black and white thinkers. We seem to be open, empathetic, willing to to see both sides of an equation, which I think is is healthy. All right. 
You can't turn anything on me. I know who I am. Oh, good for you, girlfriend. I was just trying to make an example. Um, but yeah, you seem to know exactly who you are. and You're very confident in your opinions. So if any of my conversation fell on your deaf ears today, then you know what, my love? I send you love, and I hope one day you are open to opening up your mind a bit, opening up your heart a bit, and listening to other people sometimes. Because like I said, it does help us strengthen our own values. It does help us understand the world a lot better. Um, so yeah, my opinion changed with Anne Marie once I saw her on and off the show. I hope she comes back. Well, she's not coming back. She's been fired, Carrie. But yeah, I think we just got to see more of her. Are we still talking about Anna Marie? Geez. Um, if you think that we're just talking about Anna Marie, then that means the conversation that we've had for the past 20 minutes may have also fallen on deaf ears because the conversation, even though it stemmed around Anne Marie, I felt like it was a much bigger and more important conversation that we were having. If you didn't take away from that, then sorry. There are other, you know, more shallow YouTube shows that you can go and watch if you want more of just fluff. I tend to have deeper thoughts sometimes, or I tend, I tend to challenge those thoughts. Um, all right. Well, oh, Tasha says, Bravo knew how they were only helping her for one season, and that's why we didn't see the other side. She was right. She gave Crystal. She did give Chris, Crystal a storyline. She gave. She did make Crystal relevant. Not shallow YouTube shows. <laughs> Name them. I'm not naming them. You know what they are. Uh, that one person Zach opened my mind to was Teddy with his interview, but I still don't ever want to see Teddy on Beverly. See, and that's okay too, though. I think some people we don't need to see on these reality shows anymore, or some people you're just not going to enjoy watching. Teddy, I feel a little differently about because people have such strong feelings towards Teddy that I'm actually like, that's what makes her, makes her such a force multiplier. Well, actually, I don't know if Carlos would agree that Teddy's a force multiplier, but Teddy definitely makes waves and gets people talking because people are still talking about her. Wanda says, yes, this was a much bigger conversation than Anne Marie. I agree. See, there we go. Somebody gets it. Somebody was listening. Baby, I'm deep. I was an English major. A degree does not speak to intelligence. A degree speaks to discipline. A degree means you know how to put words on the paper and how to follow a rubric. A degree does not make you an intelligent person, my love. I'm sure you are a very smart person. I'm sure you have a very big heart. I was only reacting to the energy that you were giving me in the live chat because I thought we were having a very open conversation that you did not seem to be very receptive to. Okay. Um, but I don't like when people flex their four degrees because I'm like, good for you. You went to school and you put some words on some paper. That proves that you have discipline, but it doesn't necessarily prove you've got a brain. Um, and sometimes I think you have to have a solid head on your shoulders. You have to have a, you know, you need the brain, you need the heart. You need to be able to put both of them into action and know when to compartmentalize things sometimes and when to just have a little empathy. Uh, do you think Anna Marie was had such a poor as edit because of everything that came out about her husband and Bravo is looking for it now. I think so. I think that very much could have been a big part of it. That very much could have been a big part of it. Um, will you watch Gypsy Rose doc when it comes out? She just dumped her husband and went back to her ex girl for, oh, put her on Vanderpump rules. Let's get it. Put her on Vanderpump rules. We know that Zach goes, we know how deep Zach goes, ask his lovers. Listen, they can take, if you, listen, I can't help it if people enjoy going deep. Um, a degree does not speak to intelligence. That's coming from someone with three degrees here. Thank you, Storm. Baby, I had to analyze Shakespeare. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, good for you, girl. I'm not challenging your intelligence. You're the one that feels the need to prove it. So you know, I'll allow your insecurities to speak for themselves. Um, but good for you. I'm glad you have a degree. I'm glad you read some Shakespeare. Um, I'm glad that sh reading Shakespeare is, you know, what determines intelligence these days. Um, all right. 
I have no degree, but lots of loans. <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, let him know, Zach. Don't try. Uh, I have three degrees and the student loans to follow. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. Joe says he loves enjoyed deep conversations. Stacy said, not Romeo and Juliet. Listen. She's like, I, I she's worldly. She knows Romeo and Juliet. I wonder if she's also analyzed the Titanic. Yeah, a degree, especially an in English degree, helps you to think critically. It actually doesn't. All school does is teach you discipline, but it can't teach you life. Um, all right. And on that note, thank you to everyone that has a degree or doesn't have a degree. That doesn't make you any more or less of a smart person. It doesn't make you any more or less of a good or a bad person. It just makes you somebody that has a degree and loves, you know, and knows that Romeo and Juliet die at the end of the story. And that's how love wins. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to No Pills with Zach Peter. That's me. You can come and fight with me in the live chat every morning, Monday through Thursday, live streaming on YouTube and available on all podcast platforms. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, then definitely leave me a five-star review. Um, five stars on Spotify too. You can listen and watch the podcast on Spotify. And yeah, we have bonus episodes for members. If you're a member on Apple Plus or you're a member on YouTube, if you're a Zach Pack member. You get a bonus episode every Thursday. Today is Wednesday, so I'll be doing a live recap on my YouTube channel of Vanderpump Rules in the Valley. I'll have my friend Jacques. He'll be here recapping with me. So get ready. Stay tuned for that. I will see you guys tonight. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, have a wonderful day. You know, if you have a degree, good for you. Go pat yourself on the back. Rub one out because you deserve it. You earned it. Um, thank you. Follow me at Just Plain Zach. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach on Instagram. And if you haven't done so yet, guys, definitely check out my other podcast, Disaster Daters, which is a lot of fun. So you can definitely tune into that. Disaster Daters on all podcast platforms, or you can watch it exclusively on YouTube. Um, what time tonight? I believe we're going live at 6 p.m. Pacific. 6 p.m. Pacific on YouTube for our Vanderpump and Valley recap with me and my boy Jacques Peterson. All right. Ciao for now, guys. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.